Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's talk about another easy problem on lead code today. Number of 1 bits, lead code 191. In this problem, we are given a number and we have to calculate the Hamming weight, which is number of 1 bits or set bits in the binary representation of the integer. Then in example 1, n is 11 and Hamming weight of 11 is 3 because binary representation of 11 is 1011. It has 3 bit sets. So this is the first bit set, second one and third one. And hence we return 3 as our answer. And if you want to see how we convert the decimal number to binary number, please check this video out in the i button. And the way we convert the decimal number to binary can also be used as our solution. So now let's look at binary representation of 11 again. Let's focus on the least significant bit, which is the rightmost bit. By looking at this number, how do we know if this bit is 1 or 0? And the answer is, if the number is odd, then this bit is 1. And if this number is even, then this bit is 0. Let's take some even number like 10 as an example as well. And here we can see that the last bit is 0. So what we can do is we can actually divide the number by 2, similar to the process of converting a decimal number to binary number representation. And if there is a remainder, that means this number was odd. So the last bit is 1. But if it is even, the last bit is 0. So we can take a count variable and whenever we see a 1, we actually increment the counter by 1. And then we have to get rid of this bit. So how can we do that? And the answer is simple. We can actually just divide the number by 2. For example, 11 by 2 gives us 5. And binary representation of 5 is 101, one, right? That's how we get rid of the rightmost bit. And then our algorithm is simple. That each time we see a 1, we increment our count by 1. And get rid of this bit by dividing the number. And continue doing this until our number becomes 0. Now let's see this in action. For example, for n equal to 11, we do 11 modulo 2 that gives us 1 as a remainder. So our count becomes 1 and then we divide this number by 2 and get 5. So we get rid of the last bit in the number. Now we do 5 modulo 2 that again gives us 1. So our count now becomes 2 and we again divide the number by 2. So 2 modulo 2 gives us 0 this time. So our count says 2 only and we again divide the number by 2. So we get 1 and again we do 1 modulo 2 that gives us 1 as a remainder. So now our count becomes 3. And now because our number has become 0, we have come to the end of the iteration and that's why we will return count as 3 and that will be our Hamming weight. Writing the code for this is super simple. We will just need the count variable initially and while number is greater than 0, we will continue with our iteration. So we can define our remainder as n modulo 2 and because the remainder can either be 0 or 1, we can just increment our count by remainder and this way we can avoid the if else condition. So we don't have to check if remainder is 1 or 0. It will automatically be taken care of by the addition. And then we will just divide the number by 2. And finally, we will return count as our answer. Now let's run this code. Cool, let's submit this code. Awesome. And what is more natural or bitwise way to get rid of this last bit or to divide the number by 2? And the answer is using the right shift operator. For example, let's take 11 again. And if we apply the right shift operator once, we will get 101, which is 5. So it's equivalent to dividing the number by 2. So we again start with count equal to 0. And we do 11 modulo 2. So that gives us 1 as remainder. So we increment our count by 1. And now we will do 11 right shift 1. And that gives us 5. Then we repeat the process for 5. So we do 5 modulo 2 and we get 1. So we increment the count by 1. Now our count becomes 2. And then we right shift 5 once. So we will get 2. So again, we do 2 modulo 2, that will give us 0. So our count says as 2. And then we write shift 2 by 1. So it will become 1. Finally, we do 1 modulo 2, that will give us 1. So our count now becomes 3. And now when we write shift 1, we will get 0. And now because the number is 0, we will return our count as 3. And that will be our answer. And now let's change our code to reflect that. So instead of dividing by 2, we will just do n is equal to n write shift 1. That's it. Now let's run this code again. Let's submit it. Awesome. So far we were checking the last bit in the number using modulo operator. But we can also use bitwise and operator. For any number, if we do bitwise and with 1, we will get 1 if the last digit is 1. Otherwise, we will get 0. Let's do 11 and 1. We can see that binary representation of 11 is 1011. And binary representation of 1 will be 1. And then it will have all the leading zeros. So here we will just look at three leading zeros just to match the number of digits with 11. So for last digit, we will get 1 and 1 equal to 1. But for the remaining digits, we will get 0. 
because and operator returns one only when all the inputs are one otherwise it will return zero so one and zero gives a zero zero and zero gives a zero and finally one and zero also gives a zero so we will get one as output similarly five and one will also give us one but if last bit in the number is zero then we will get output as zero so now let's tweak our algorithm to use bitwise end so we do 11 and 1 that will give us 1 so we increment our count to 1 then we right shift 11 by 1 so we will get 5 and again we do 5 and 1 that will give us 1 again so we increment our count to 2 we right shift 5 by 1 so that will give us 2 then 2 and 1 will give us 0 because these bits will cancel out so we will get 0 so that's why our count remains 2 then we right shift 2 by 1 so we will get 1 again we do 1 and 1 that will give us 1 again so we increment our count to 3 and now we right shift 1 so we get 0 and because now we got the number as 0 so we will end our iteration and we will return 3 as our answer and now let's change our code to reflect that so instead of using the modulo operator we will just do the bitwise end operator with the number and check if it's not equal to 0 that means last bit is set so we will increment our count by 1 otherwise count stays same now let's run this code cool let's submit this code awesome in terms of time complexity all the methods we discussed take off log n time where n is the number itself and the reason for this is at each step we are dividing the number by 2 so if we represent our number as 2 to the power of x then how many divisions it requires to get this number to 0 because that's what we are doing in the end right so it will be x and the reason for this is if, if we take logarithm on both sides we will get log n here and that will be equal to x log 2 but if we take logarithm of 2 then this will be 1 right and this will be log 2n so our x is equal to log 2n and that's our time complexity but if you think about any programming language in general there is a 32 bit integer right so it will be proportional to o of 32 because we are going through one bit at a time and the largest number or integer we will have is 2 to the power of 32 so the time complexity is constant in a way and now the question is can we do better and the answer is yes we can actually use brian cunningham algorithm which can reduce our time complexity to o of k where k is the number of bits set in the binary representation of the number but in the interest of time i will cover it in the follow-up video and in terms of space complexity it will be o of 1 because we are not using any extra space apart from some variables i hope this video was useful to you if it was please like share and subscribe the code link is in the description below if you have any questions or suggestions please write them in the comment box thank you for watching have a nice time